This is part two of the four-part series on building this custom engagement ring in SolidWorks. We're going to get a little more advanced here. I'm going to start doing some lofts um, and a circular pattern to create the prongs for this main stone. So let's start by creating the sketches for our loft. We need to do our profile sketches first. I'm going to hide my shank and we're going to sketch on the top face of this setting. So this is going to be my start profile and I want the prongs to sit about 45 degrees. So let's just create a construction geometry here at 45 degrees. And a good rule of thumb, you want your stone to basically stick into the prong about 30 to 50 percent the diameter of the prong. So I'm going to set the center of this right on the edge of the seat and the top of our prong will be at one and a quarter millimeters. Alright, now let's do the bottom profile here. I want it to intersect the bottom edge of our seat and then also that 45 degree line. And we're going to make that a little smaller so it's going to blend from one millimeter up to 1.25 millimeters. Now in order to create our profile sketch we need to create a construction plane. So I'm going to hide my stone and I'm going to create the plane on this 45 degree line. So you come up here to reference geometry, plane, select your line as the first reference and then it's going to be perpendicular to that face. So you can see it's going right through the center of the prong there. So let's create a sketch on that plane. I'm going to use the spline tool to create the profile shape of my prong here. And I want to make sure the point of this spline pierces through these circles that I created. So select both the point and the circle and use the pierce relationship. And I'll set the shape of this spline visually at first. And a lot of people don't know you can actually dimension these handles and create relationships on these handles. So I'll create a vertical relationship there. Set some dimensions here. There's an angle dimension on this handle. And you can set length dimensions on the handles and fully lock this sketch down. There we go. Now that our sketch is fully black, we know it's fully dimensioned. Now let's hide our plane. So now we're ready to do our loft. Come up here to Lofted Boss. Let's first select our profiles. Here's my start profile and my end profile. And then let's select our guide curve. And after we create this loft, I'm going to do a boss that extends this prong just straight up. So I want to make sure that that boss blends smoothly into this loft. So I'm going to set a start constraint of normal to profile. And also, because I'm going to be doing a circular pattern of this body, I want to make sure that this loft doesn't merge to our setting. So I'm going to unselect the merge result box. Now let's create the boss to extend this prong up. And keep in mind, you can use the same sketch on multiple features. So I'm going to use that same sketch I used for my start profile on the loft and just extrude this up. And a good rule of thumb for prongs, uh, the jeweler needs some extra room to work with. So we're going to extend this prong up about the same length as the crown of this stone, which for this one is about 1.9 millimeters. And I do want to merge this to the result, but I only want to merge it to the prong. So I'm going to go down here to feature scope, hit uh, unselect, auto select, and select your prong. Now let's create a circular pattern of this prong. I'm going to come up here to the drop down under linear pattern, select circular pattern. For parameters you can select any circular edge. I'm going to select this bottom edge. We're going to do a 360 degree pattern, equal spacing, and we're going to have four prongs. So it's going to equally space four prongs around the whole setting. And down here we want to use the bodies. Select your prong and it gives you a full preview. It looks good. 
Now let's just clean this up a little bit. I'm going to create a fillet around the whole edge of the seat here. And we can combine our prongs. So let's go to Insert, Features, Combine. We're going to add all these bodies together. These four prongs and the seat. And I'll create some final fillets. Instead of selecting an edge, you can also select faces for fillets. So I'm going to select these four outer faces and it'll fillet the relationship between the prongs and the setting. So there's our completed setting for the center stone. We just need to blend it into the ID of the ring. And I can actually use the original sketch from the shank to you to do an extruded cut. And to do that, you can actually come down here to selected contours. And you just want to select that center circle. So I'm going to do a mid plane uh, enough to make sure it clears the whole ring. go nice and blended right there in the ID so that wraps up part two of this four-part series stay tuned for part three where we're going to start adding some accent stones to this ring